Okay, you guys, um, this is my fourth video in a week. My goodness, obviously I've got a lot to say at the moment. Um, I literally wanted to give an overview of a day in the life of someone who's transgendered, specifically me, obviously, this is about my journey after all, but I wanted to give you kind of a bit of an insight into what we kind of go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Just wanted to show you my t-shirt, first of all. As you can see, it's Gaga. Um, someone who inspires me because she lives as she wants and she's true to herself kind of what I'm doing so you can see the connection there anyway I digress back to it so on a day-to-day -day basis the kind of stuff that I do first of all get up obviously um, I then have to take my hormones I take estrogen progesterone to promote breast growth and spiritone is a testosterone blocker obviously testosterone for ladies isn't that good? And I also take aspirin as well. Only 75 micrograms, but basically it's to counteract any thrombosis because when you're on HRT, you're at increased risk of that. So I monitor my blood pressure date, you know, um, anyway, but my doctor's checked all that out and it's fine. So that's cool. Um, and I take a vitamin because this girl wants to stay healthy as well as grow into a girl. So yeah, and then I get up. Obviously, once I've done that, I have a shave and a shower. Yes, it is gutting at the moment. Um, I haven't gone through my laser yet, so I have to shave every morning before I put the makeup and stuff on. It's a bit of a pain, but it's where my life is at the moment. And then, so, you know, got ready. Everything's great. I look as good as I'm going to. And I feel pretty good about myself. And then I leave the house. And then the fun starts. So basically, I'm live, I live at the moment about five to ten minute walk away from the bus stop. And by the time I get there in the mornings, most mornings, because I have to walk past the butcher, and they're open early in the morning, and they're cutting in, you, you generally hear them sniggering and stuff. So I've been, I guess, ridiculed, taking the mickey out of about two or three times before I even hit the bus stop in the morning. And it's about twenty past seven most mornings. So that's pretty good going, isn't it? You've been taking the piss out of basically two or three times and you've just left the house. And then I get the bus. And then most mornings when I get on the bus, the bus drivers in Bournemouth are lovely. They generally they're like they'll say they'll either say nothing or they'll say, Oh hi you morning kind of stuff and then you get on and then you turn and you face the bus passengers and it's like some mornings I'm with my friend. And it's lovely when I am with her because at least I've got someone to talk to and to kind of distract me from the. But a lot of the mornings you get on and people are just staring. Um, I had one woman in a hijab one. No, she had a burqa on, I beg your pardon. Full full burqa, face covered and everything. And she went... I never turned around and said something. And not for any other reason other than the fact that, do you know what? I'm not being prejudiced towards you, so why are you towards me? But... You know, that's her belief, and it, I just left it, because sometimes silence is the best answer anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, you get I, I get, I'm on the bus, and I go to work, and then I get to work. And work's a bit of a refuge, to be honest with you. It's like, everyone there is really, really lovely. And I do work with some really nice, nice people, and people who have helped me on this journey, because they've helped me settle really, really quickly in the way that they've accepted me. Um... I do work with a brilliant employer and they're fully supporting me throughout this and you know I work with them in my own life and they've helped me move to in, move offices and stuff and, and supported me in that whole process so I am one of the lucky ones I understand that um, but yeah so like work for me is a refuge because I go there and I'm accepted for me sounds crazy doesn't it but yeah, that's the way it is, because out in the real world, you know, people don't have to be nice to you. There are no defined policies and stuff. And I'm not saying people are work are nice to me because of those. I just think I'm lucky my employer only tends to employ nice people. So there you go. Um, and then it comes to lunchtime. And some lunchtimes I just stay in work, not because I'm hiding, but because I can't put myself out there and face the, the laughs and the stares and the sniggers. And, and a lot of days, though, I do actually go out and, like, go out for a walk or go out to just do a bit of window shopping or go out to have coffee with people or whatever. And it is quite tough. Um, I walk in West... I walk... I work in Westbourne. Sorry, the jewellery coming out of me there. 
and um, it's in it's in Bournemouth basically. And you, you you get out of my work and you go down the high street and you know I can have been out for five ten minutes and you, you you've had about ten twenty stares and you just some days you just want to it's hard some days you just want to smack people's heads together and say have you never seen a bloody transgender person before I think other days people are just looking because they're curious I don't know but you do get stared at a lot and sometimes it gets on your nipples trust me so you go through that on the lunch time and then you go back to your little refuge at work again and everything's cool and then you leave going home in the evenings is always a bit of a um, Sometimes I just don't know is it or I'm just that oblivious to it, but you walk to the bus stop and you're getting looked at and stared at at the bus stop and sometimes they're looking down the nose at you. And where I work, there's a, um, a English language centre. We have a lot of people in Bournemouth who come here from other countries to kind of for the summer vacation, basically. Um, and they're using Bournemouth as a base when they're jotting off to London and here and there and everywhere. And you walk past them because they're waiting for the buses to get into town as well and they just kind of just stare at you or they're laughing and some days if I had a good day at work it doesn't bother me other days I wouldn't say I want to crawl into my shell because I'm not that kind of a person anyway but it's just some days you just want to scream at the top of your voice so that's just me getting up in the morning going to work and then go to the bus stop and then you, you get the same stuff on the bus on the way home and then on the walk home from the bus stop to my house and then I get home and I have my little refuge um, I'm very lucky my housemates are very supportive um, well they just know me as Debbie and you know they treat me as a woman so that in itself is amazing anyway you know they're really good to me um, on a day-to-day -day basis I'm happy and I know that I've got friends who have kind of gone through the other side of this at the moment um, who they get outed by people at work and stuff and are saying that you're just a bloke we're happy as transgender people if you go through a day and someone doesn't out you it's really weird and I thought about this earlier and basically if you go through a day and someone doesn't out you you're happy but I'm going to start using it as a positive thing because if someone says to me you're, you're a bloke I'll just think to myself yeah for the moment I am and it's a positive affirmation of like I'm presenting differently therefore they have to say it out loud or register to others around them because they're ignorant the fact that I appear to be different to what I might be physically at the moment or to what they perceive me to be so anyone watching this and who has that happen to them just take it as that all right they say to me you're a bloke I guess physically I am but in every other way I haven't been for a long time anyway um, things that we guys have left behind, sometimes people kind of forget that, um, me personally, I've left a daughter, I've left lots of friends, um, and some of my family can't accept it as well. Um, the family thing will come with time, there's nothing I can do about that, you know, or if any of you are watching this, I'm doing this to be happy and to be me, I've tried everything I can to be a male. And I know you, 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 I'm hearing a lot of, oh, we thought you were happy. For one, did you ever ask? And it's not a criticism, it's just, this, it, you know, it's just, it's the truth. If you'd never talked to me about my life and how I felt and stuff, you would never have known, you would never know, and you never knew. But I was so unhappy as a male, I couldn't live as a male any longer, and I'm no longer doing that, and I'm happier for it. Sorry if you don't like that, but that's the truth. Um, so why am I going through this again? Well, all I want you to do is kind of to give you a bit from a transgender person's viewpoint. Imagine that as soon as you were aware that you were different to others and stuff, you know, when you're really small and you, you know, you you're aware of yourself as a person and how you are different. Imagine that you also thought that you weren't right that something was wrong that something was missing or that you were something else that's what it's like for us and some people can change that earlier in their lives because of their awareness or their courage i mean it's taken me to i've been 39 
because I haven't had the, the self confidence or the courage within myself and I'm not saying I didn't have the conviction I think I did when I was younger I just I wasn't confident enough to go through it and it is easier you know certainly now than it was 20 years ago so that's why I'm doing it now but it's obviously it's the right time for me to do it now and that is it um, so you know taking into account everything I've said about what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis if there are times when we feel down, when we seem down to you, or distant, or in another world, that's why, you know, we are going through a lot. I am at times, certainly. Um, and if we seem to overreact to um, moments of kindness, or compliments or anything, it's because we're out, you know, any anything you say nice to to me, like for something you say, oh that looks nice. And I'm not saying I'm fishing for compliments here as well. What I'm saying is the fact that you're recognizing something in me or giving me, a, you know, a positive affirmation of of myself and my identity that I've chosen. It sometimes it is overwhelming. So if I overreact, I you know that is why completely. Um, yeah, basically that's it, and the reason I'm saying all this is because I'm hoping that it will educate others as to what I'm going through, what we as transgender people sometimes go through, but also I'm looking forward to looking back at this and seeing how far my life's come, and you know, I know some transgender people, once they've gone through the journey, they say they don't really get scared of that much, kind of can't wait, because that is, you know, to... To give you an example, right, I've gone from one of the most accepted demographs of people. I was basically a white, heterosexual male. As a white, heterosexual male, you really haven't got that many prejudices or people who are kind of against you, like outspokenly anyway. I've gone from that to a female, transgendered, gay woman. I... I, I female and women are the same thing obviously but what I'm trying to get across here is like why would you put yourself through that if it wasn't the right thing for you to do or if that's how you've always been or, or wanted to live just a thought don't know why I wanted to say that really but it's out there now anyway um I wanted to finish with a little bit of a musical thing um a tune basically that I identify with a lot and I know that other people who are part of minority groups identify with this tune and this lady, hence the t-shirt. But um, yeah, in a nutshell, any of you guys watching this who don't understand, this is it. See you soon guys, take care, bye.